Um, thank you very much. I'm very excited in being in Egypt after 20 years. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, thank you. I left as a medical student 20 years ago in 2002, and now I'm back as a consultant speaking here in one of the conferences. So my massive appreciation for Egypt and for Egyptians for all their support and for making me a doctor. So after Egypt, I went to the US and uh, I recently moved back to Jordan. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about burning that fib. And I think one of uh, your biomedical engineers, uh, Khaled, where's Khaled? Khaled uh, works with me here. so. Most of these, <laughs> he's a exactly, he's a, he's a double agent. All right, so um, I like to present things like a little bit, a little bit more interactive so that uh, people can uh, feel the nice thing about EP. 32 year old uh, man with palpitations that is persistent symptomatic for the past few days. Okay, so this is uh, a hall filled with EPs. Everybody knows this is AFib. This is uh, who came in with this. Okay, so what do we do? I'm just curious to know what our colleagues will see. Would we cardiovert right away? Would we amio concor eliquis? This is a Jordanian thing, which I tr I'm trying to oppose. And IV heparin tea, cardioversion the next morning, or tea and cardioversion right away. Um, we can either ma make votes, or I can just tell you what I did. What I... You can go, can go for, for the time. Say, yeah, say again? Yes, okay. So I usually would go with IV heparin. Uh, oops, how do we go back? There you go. We go with IV heparin TE cardioversion because we don't know how long that's been going on. And this is one of the things. Patient back one month later, the AFib tends to come back. Now what do we do? Antiarrhythmics, FLEC, amio, DIG, and amlodipine. Um, and these are the things, if it's back again, what do we do? Amio, dronedarone, concor plus amio, or we go for an ablation. Obviously, I'm EP and we're gonna go for ablation. <laughs> okay, one of the things I want to, I, I want to um, talk about here is the, and all my EP colleagues here know that when you have this very nice, um, normal looking tissue in the posterior wall, in the anterior wall, in the atrium, Usually, uh, this is a healthier atrium and this gives you better outcomes. So, the talk today is multiple procedures. What do we do? And one of the points I want to try to tell you is that the best way to prevent multiple procedures is to do probably ablation early before we have all that scar tissue form and before that we have um, a success rate for AFib ablation that is much lower than what it's supposed to be. This is uh, one of our patients that we ended up ablating. And this is, basically, this is a full fib ablation that, and this is what we usually do. Um, I wish there was a way we can pause it, but I guess there isn't. But when you look at the posterior wall with all that scar tissue here, a success rate for this guy is definitely different from the other one. And this is on very, very fast, fast, uh, it's much faster. Um, <laughs> then what it's, it's usually, but it was done in, in let's see, like 10 seconds. Feb ablations can be done in 10 seconds. <laughs> we're actually very fast. We, we have to say, we have to, we have to. This was a redo case. Uh, exactly. So 42, this is a 42 year old with mitral valve uh, replacement, 10 years of AFib declined ablation by two major facilities, and then she failed antiarrhythmic, including amiodarone. Let's, what would you do? Not care and just go and ablate. Amio, again, for 100 milligrams PO for lifelong. Amio, 200 milligrams lifelong, or flecainide. And we're gonna go over all of that stuff. So we can see this massive, horrible scar in the anterior wall, and also the same thing in the posterior wall. And this is a case I'd, uh, I don't think we did this with, with I don't think we did this with Khaled. I think we did this with, uh, with Eid. But anyways, this is for, again, for those like who are not really all EP, whatever you see, it is not the beautiful purple color that, we are, that we're supposed to see. This patient, although she is young, but she has this massive scar. So we ended up ablating everywhere. Anterior wall, posterior wall, and try to isolate the, the posterior wall. This patient is probably gonna come back. And we'll go over quickly uh, for some of the literature. Okay, 
So another very, very important thing is that whenever we have somebody who's had an open heart, mitral valve replacement, is that to look at, uh, look into the right atrium. Because you can find scar in the, in the posterior wall in the right atrium. And sometimes a lot, of the, um, a lot of the abnormalities are coming from the right atrium, not just from the left atrium, especially in patients these young and who've had some, um, some surgeries and ended up isolating the posterior wall. The patient was in an atrial tack and ended up um, terminating. So going over some of the guidelines for fib ablations, when to ablate, when not to ablate, Going, and going back to my, the very first point, the best, probably the best way to prevent multiple, multiple ablations is to ablate early. And this is actually, at least in the ACC AHA guidelines, it is, in some situations, it is a class one indication to ablate early paroxysmal AFibs before they, they turn into something else. But in, uh, in I know that uh, European uh, societies, I guess it's still not a class one. Um, these are some of the things for the interest of time. I'm just going to go a little faster. So this is, this, this is some of the skeleton of how to approach different uh, uh, treatment for AFib. Medications, dofetilide, dronetarone, FLEC, propafenone, sololol are still first-line treatment. Amiodarone is not a first-line treatment. I always tend to stress this a lot in my talks because uh, I tend to see a lot of amiodarone being used, in, at least in Jordan. I don't know how it is in Egypt, but there's so much of it as a first line, and we don't want to, we don't want to do that. So class one indication, AF catheter ablation is useful in symptomatic paracetamol AF refractory to intolerant to at least one class one or three antiarrhythmic. It's a class one indication. Um, and class two A is reasonable for the, those patients um, who are persistent AF intolerant to at least one. Okay, amio is a class two A. It is reasonable if we want to con convert. Same thing with propafenone and flecainide. Now let's take a look at this guy, 55-year-old with 10 years of AFib. This was, would be permanent. So most of the permanent AFibs... You do... <laughs> But it's very young. I tend to ablate. <laughs> Probably three times. <laughs> we ablate. Correct. So um, I tend to be U.S. trained. Uh, I'm Egyptian educated and U.S. trained. So <laughs> my training tends to uh, uh, take uh, my better half. And uh, we, yes, we do. It is correct. We do tend to ablate a lot in the U.S. Um, personally, I only ablate up to three times, and then after the three times, if that doesn't work, we go for an AV node ablation with a pacemaker. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> I think we can, we can agree on that uh, tiny little bit. But look at this massive, horrible scar. Again, this is just, it's just horrible. Um, Okay, this is an interesting study that was impact of early versus delayed atrial fibrillation catheter ablation on atrial arrhythmia recurrences. And this is, it's interesting because it's, um, it kind of gave us a timeline where when can we, uh, like the timeline, how much time do we have when using antiarrhythmics before we go for, for ablation? And this is, this was around a year. So if, if, Basically, you use, uh, if you ablate early for persistence and you wait for around a year versus, uh, I'm sorry, if you ablate early versus you uh, try with different antiarrhythmics for one year, uh, it makes no difference on outcomes. And the outcomes here were kind of low. They're like the success rate was around 56 uh, to 57 percent in the study. And it did show that, but after the year, that kind of like drops uh, dramatically. Okay, so uh, for the sake of time, I only have two minutes, but um, ablations do work. A trial of antiarrhythmic uh, then ablation is class one. Reduce the use of amio, at least it's uh, my personal opinion. It's a class 2A in AHA uh, recommendations. Ablate early, don't wait until the scar tissue remodeling starts. Um, from a practice standpoint, I do, as, uh, as Dr. Mervet has mentioned, in the US they tend to ablate a lot. I personally do can ablate up to two or three times, if that doesn't work and the patient is still symptomatic, still has uh, or low ejection fraction, 
then uh, I tend to either do an AV node ablation with a CRTP if the EF um, is in the 40s or uh, uh, a left bundle pacemaker if the, pace, uh, if the ejection fraction is normal with an AV node uh, ablation. Thank you very much.